Thank you. In one of the studies, about loneliness being an epidemic. They call it a disease. And it is compounded by the fact that we think that we are not lonely because of this devices that have screens in front of us and that we are connected to social media and everything. But this loneliness started way back. If you are willing to understand it spiritually way back at the fall of man, But right now we have a generation that is completely isolated and lonely. And in the study that I was uh, going through, not just one, many people were telling how they don't know even how to make friends anymore. This was a secular study. It had nothing to do with the gospel or the Bible. But one of the things they said that changes us for the better is gratitude. And they showed an example of a Japanese village where people lived to a long, long, old age. And not only did they do that, they were happy. And they were interviewing the people there basically trying to find out the secret of their longevity. And the most common denominator was that they had friends and they were a community. And I was thinking about that when the Lord spoke to me and said, this church is a community. We fail to see sometimes the importance of that. And I've told you before that no man is an island. And that iron sharpens iron, that we should be there for each other. That is why I'm so much against gossip. I'll be talking more about that. When I talk about integrity today. But here's the thing. Community is outward. I have heard of people who have known each other for more than 20, 25 years, but then, and even makes them understand that they don't really know each other. What is inward is not shown to the people outside. There's a facade. Here's the Lord who knows our hearts. And in our hearts we may be crying out. 
And the Lord is telling me to tell you, it all starts, the solution starts with gratitude. And the Bible speaks about giving thanks to the Lord. And the world has deceived us into thinking it is more dignified to keep quiet. To have a silent minute of prayer. Nonsense. That's not what the Bible says. So lift up your voice and thank Him. If you had a good breakfast, thank Him for that. If you're here, thank Him for that. If you made it through this week, the last week, thank Him for that. And thank Him for His presence, which cannot be taken away. His presence with you throughout this week that is coming ahead and even now. So thank Him with your mouth. Open your mouth and thank Him. Cry out to Him if you need to. Remind Him of His promises to you. Hallelujah. It's not that He forgot, it's that you need to be reminded. So when you come together on a Sunday and when you meet each other, what it means when the Bible tells us to glorify God starts with you giving thanks, acknowledging that without Him you are nothing. Jesus said, abide in me, without me you can do nothing. There are people who miss out on this. But you don't need to miss out on that. So just open your mouth and just thank Him. Hallelujah. And worship Him. Hallelujah. I had this question before that I asked the Lord. Why aren't our prayers answered? Why aren't some prayers answered? And he's been teaching us why this is so. And in that, I had a dream last night. Normally, I don't share my dreams with you. But this is regarding this question and the answer and one of the answers, one of the reasons why our prayers are not answered. In this dream, part of this dream involved some children below eight but able to talk So they were talking to me and they were putting away some game they were playing in a cardboard box and obviously this came with the board and a lot of instruction. And part of the instruction were some things they had to say, incantations. And they were saying among themselves, maybe we should not say these things. And I said, yes, these things do more harm. Because before in this dream, I heard a noise and I had people around me got scared because of that noise. And upon inquiring what this noise was, I was led to these children in the dream. So, it seems very innocent. If you want to play the game, you must follow the instruction. And part of the instruction is calling up demons. 
And this person who is the leader among them, the, the eldest child is saying, maybe we should not say that. And along with that, maybe we should not say the Lord's Prayer also. I said, no, pray as the Bible tells you, but don't do all those demonic activities. What this means is that some of us are praying, yes, but we are making soulish prayers. We are making prayers based on what we are told on how to pray. And we wonder why God is not answering. And as a result, we are going through what seems like the same thing over and over again. And this is because of soulish prayers. Last week I was praying for someone and God did a miracle in their life. But I was, as I was talking to that person, the person made a statement like this. Only God can help. A month or two ago, I spoke about the same thing. This person said, only God can help. I said, no, that's not true. While only God can help, only a divine intervention will change the situation God has given us the power and authority. So, we are not just passively crying out, only you can do something, do something if you want to do something. No. We are to take responsibility for that matter and pray according to His promises in His word. Because life and death are in the power of our tongue. And I told you that before. And this has to do with what I wanted to share about. And that was integrity. Because lots of men are falling like flies from the ministry because of this one thing they lack I asked the Lord what, what is going on and I've explained this in detail through scripture yesterday but I'll speak regarding these the term that is translated in the Old Testament as integrity is Tuma or Tom. This means what? Simplicity, sincerity of heart, intention, truthfulness, uprightness. Like I said last week, it's not just parroting the words, you must do something about it, you must believe it, and here, integrity is about doing the word, not just speaking it out. If you go to Matthew 7, 21, it says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven, who does the will. Here God has given you the authority, and you don't do that will, office and instead of that you point your finger at other people and you say what about this man of God what about this man of God what about this when you read in Mark 9 the disciples came to Jesus and said look these people are casting out demons in your name, but they don't belong to our club. They're not part of us. 
stop them, Jesus. And instead of stopping them, Jesus said, but he is not. Who, do, do, whoever does a miracle in my name cannot speak evil of me. For he who is not against us is on our side. Then you find in Philippians 1, Paul talking about some preaching the gospel out of envy. Not sincerely. And Paul is saying, whatever it is, the gospel is being preached. So from these two opposite almost ends, I'm not saying what they're doing is right. I'm just saying what I gleaned from it, what I understood is, don't worry about what others are doing. Check my life to see if I'm doing the will of God. Is the character of integrity working in me? Is it working in you? Is a completion instead of competition? I'm out of help to people who need help. In that way, I'm out of value to them. And for that, we need integrity of character, of everything. We want to be able to trust the person is whom they claim to be. Because confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble, the Bible says, is like a bad tooth or a foot out of joint. Meaning you can't depend on that. Are the people who you depend on the real deal? Do they walk the talk? Are they the people of integrity? When you look into the life of Abraham, he said something to his wife. I don't think these people fear the Lord. And therefore, you don't say that you are my wife. You say that you are my sister. Therein lies the key. Do you fear the Lord? And so he goes to the kingdom and tells Abimelech, this is my sister. And then God appears to Abimelech in Genesis chapter 20. It says on verse 3, verse it says, But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Indeed you are a dead man because of the woman whom you have taken, for she's a man's wife. But Abimelech had not come near her and he said Lord will you slay a righteous nation also did she not say to me she is my sister and she she herself said he is my brother and so in the integrity of my heart and innocence of my hand I have done this we are sincere in our prayers but they are soulish And they don't mean anything. And they don't have the results. Because they are not according to the will of God. But here's Abimelech telling God. Why do you want to kill me? I've done this out of my integrity. And this is what the Lord says. And God said to him in a dream. Yes, I know that you did this in the integrity of your heart. God sees your heart. God says, yes, even Cornelius' arms and prayers reached heaven. 
That's why I'm saying, I'm telling you, don't fake it. Because God knows your heart. For I also, God is saying, I also withheld you from sinning against me. Therefore, I did not let you touch her. And now, restore her. Here's the thing. When you have integrity, when God sees that you have integrity, He will be a shield around you. He'll protect you. He'll withheld, withhold you from sinning. In Psalm, in Proverbs 27, 7, it says, He stores up sound wisdom for those who are upright, and He's a shield to those who walk uprightly. Many times in my life, the Lord has told me, don't go this way. And I wonder why he's telling me, don't go this way. And I understood, he's keeping those who have integrity. We don't have that in our fallen nature, but the Lord perfects that which concerns us. And as we are filled with the Holy Spirit, and as we transform our mind, renew our mind in the Word of God, we are transformed into His image. And His, He is integrity. In Psalm 15, David said, if you read the whole Psalm, it says, Who shall enter heaven? Let me find it. Yes, Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may dwell in your holy hill? He walks uprightly and works righteousness. Who is he and speaks the truth in his heart? Speaks the truth in his heart. Job said, I have made a covenant with my eyes. Who speaks the truth in his heart. God wants truth in the inward being. Do you speak truth in your heart? Or, or are you full of hypocrisy and fakery? He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up reproach against his friend, in whose eyes a wild person is despised, but he honors those who fear the Lord. He swears to his own hurt and does not change. He does not put out his money in, at usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. One thing touched me about this. It says, he who swears to his own hurt and does not change. That is integrity. You may have made a rash promise, but let your yes be a yes and your no be a no. Do you understand? You have integrity and God will guide you out of the situation, but have integrity. Don't lie to yourself and to others because the devil is the father of life. Let your yes be a yes and your no be a no. Anything else is from whom? From the evil one, yes? Now, when you go to 2 Chronicles, you read about Amaziah in chapter 25. He had a problem. Basically, he hired people of Israel, of northern Israel. At that time, there was the kingdom was divided. And then the Lord was displeased and sent a prophet to him saying, no, you should not do this. But Amazon is asking, what shall I do? I've already paid them. And this is the problem that we have. Who do you trust? Our payment, our money, or the Lord? And the man of God says, 
The Lord is able to give you much more than this. And this is a problem. Do you trust the money? Or do you trust the person who gives you the ability to make that money? You don't need to answer me. This is something you need to check your life. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your paths. Money is not the equation. Even though it is in the equation. Shrewdness is not the equation. You don't lie about things to get out of the situation. You can you need only to lie. You need to lie if you're not honest with yourself. How can you be honest with other people if you're not honest with yourself? Here's the thing. God is greater than all of this. He knows who we are and what we are. And in spite of all this, he still loves us. And as we read, he's a shield to those who walk in integrity. So if you want integrity, remember it's not who you are, it is what you become. It's not something you can put on like kutikura powder. It's something that you you are for out of your heart your mouth speaks do you understand so if you don't have that i have good news for you his name is jesus he will change you he has changed me there's something called character that must be developed and that is not developed by a community is developed individually and if you don't have character and if you come to a position of leadership you will hurt others so god values character and he wants you to have truth in the inward being hallelujah this is probably why why say probably because it's probably the one of the reasons why your prayers are not answered do you have integrity once a person told me or was sitting across me and speaking on the phone and on the phone he's telling the other person i'll be there in 5 minutes i'm just on, i'm on my way i'm nearing your house i said give me the phone i said this person is not on his way he's not anywhere near your house in fact he's in front of me sitting in my office i do not know how long it'll take for him to get from my office to your place and i do not know when he's going to leave but this is the fact and i hung up and i told that person don't ever lie in front of me because i will blow it out of the water if i know it's a lie if the lord says this is a lie or do something about it then maybe you will fear the lord because that is what we all need to fear the lord if there is no fear of the lord in the land he'll do mischievous things if there is no fear of the lord in our heart we will do things that are abominable to the lord so i'm telling you How do you fear the Lord? Read his word and his precepts renew your mind in the word of God. Hallelujah.
Let's all stand up and worship. In the dream, the house that the children were in looked like the logo I made for the Father's House Church. There's a lot more, but those children, I felt, were the people in the church. And they were doing all the things they were told to do, but the things that they were told to do were wrong. The instructions that came with that game was calling demons. And so I had to correct that. And what the Lord showed me is them getting a conviction of that correction. Not me speaking that correction, but them getting that conviction. And I believe. As the word says, the truth will set you free. I believe the Lord will speak to you. Don't condemn yourself. If you think you don't have integrity, no, none of us did. I say did. But as we are conformed to the image of God, we begin to take on His character. We think we are full of integrity. But that is a lie. That is not biblical integrity. The world often mimics what is true. And Paul says some may even die for a righteous man. But only God can take away our sins. And that is the death of Jesus and his resurrection. And he's our hope and our joy. And being holy means being set apart for him. So come to him. In spirit and truth, worship Him. Set yourself apart, not just on Sunday. Set yourself apart to have a relationship with Him. And then He'll guide you. He'll speak to you. Like He spoke to me through a dream. And what is needed for ministry today. There are a lot of other things that I've covered and if you want to see that you go through all the teachings of the gathering yesterday they'll be online but here's the thing you can go through all the teachings study the Bible and all the languages but what is required is the change in you is the integrity in your heart truth in the inward being Job said I made a covenant with my eyes why then should I look at a young woman that is integrity his own wife told him to <clears throat> forsake this he said why do you hold on to your integrity why don't you just curse God and die Just like that, the devil is telling you, why are you holding on to your integrity? What is there? You're holding on because of Jesus. He's the author of our faith. And if you need this character, if you need to be a person of integrity, a man, a woman of integrity before the Lord. Ask Him. Cry out to Him. As we sing the song once again, Holy. So, I exhort you once again, be a person of integrity, an uprightness, of humility, and above all fear, 
God. Stay behind the shield in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. May the love of the Father and the fellowship of the Son and the sweet companionship of the Holy Spirit be with us as we go forth to spread the gospel in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you.